I battle an incurable disease every day. It empowers me to help people like you tap into your full potential. There you go. Oh, yeah, that's a burn. I want everyone to have the tools and the right mindset to be the best version of themselves. Nutrition, exercise, inspirational stories to motivate and educate you. I'm Peter Nielsen, and I'm your personal life coach. Hey, welcome. I have an exciting show. The show is really about you and how you can be a better version of yourself, how to pick a personal trainer, as well as which health club is best for you if you want to join one, and is it appropriate for you to join one. But before we do that, every once in a while, I visit one of my past clients to see how they're doing. When I first met Joe Lepkins, he was 720 pounds. When we met, do you remember what I told you? Yes, your, your words were to me that if I don't lose the weight, that it will kill me. Joe listened to my warnings and changed his life. You know, I think as being a personal trainer, one of the most challenging things for me is that no one wants to be 720 pounds. No one wants to be addicted to food. No one wants to be addicted to alcohol, drugs, or sex. But what ends up happening is sometimes past circumstances in one's life will program you to fail. And when that happens is when you truly need to dig deep and you need to get help. So I don't know what I'm gonna find when I say hello to Joe, but it was heavy on my heart and I truly wanted to come and love on him. Hey there. Hey, come on in. Get out of the cold air. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Hey, I'm, I'm so, so glad, glad to be here. I'm so glad that you answered the door and you were home. Hey, I'm so glad to get that phone call. <laughs> I had something on my heart, man, and I just felt like I have, I mean, I haven't seen you in years. Right. And I wanted to see how you're, you're doing. Hey, I'm doing wonderful. Can I come in? Yes, sir. Come on in. First of all, how the heck are you? Man, I'm blessed. Each day I wake up, I feel better and better, and God is good. It's been a long, hard road, but it's been good. It's been, I'm not gonna say it's been easy, it's not easy, but it's been good. And at one point in time, like you said, I was weighing 700 pounds and I, I couldn't walk two feet. Now I'm able to get out and do more. You know, my, my walking is still limited, but it's better than it was, and it's getting better. Without you, without Dr. Woods, I would have been dead a long time ago. But the help of you and Dr. Woods, I'm, I'm here today, and I'm losing weight slowly but surely. My eating has gotten a whole lot better. Are you ready for me to give you a little nutritional tip while I'm here? Yeah. Yeah, I need a, a booster. This is something that I've been doing for years is surprisingly going into people's refrigerators. <laughs> and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to really just kinda give you just a 101 on what I feel, things that may not be 100% unhealthy, but if you're looking to facilitate lose excess body fat, you want to eliminate them and make better choices from your eating plan. So. I appreciate you trusting me into your refrigerator. Okay, butter. Literally 98% artery clogging fat. So what we need to do is we need to make better choices. So I'm gonna just put this stuff out here for one second and continue to go. And this again, I mean, this is like easy picking. Red meat, a heart attack on a plate <laughs> waiting to happen. I much rather see you have fish with omega-3 essential fatty acids. Um, it's good fat. It's gonna actually bring inflammation down. Um, red meat, the saturated fat, is an irritant, so it increases heart disease. Um, and a piece of steak like this, there's probably over 40 grams of fat. Yes, it's high protein, but we can make better, better choices. Egg whites, chicken breasts, turkey, are much better choices, say, than this, even though that, that it, could, it could be a good cut. Right. Okay? 
And this is another thing that, you know, and again, I'm not picking on you because I love you. You know that. Right. Potatoes are, are, you know, they're a good vegetable. We're a meat and potatoes, you know, type of country. But when it comes to looking to lose excess body fat, what I recommend for most of my clients is that stay away from starchy carbohydrates such as pasta, potatoes, white rice, after say one o'clock in the afternoon because they're more caloric and they're more dense. So I would rather see you with more colorful vegetables and fruits so that they're more fibrous and they're not starchy. So I'm gonna put this over here. Again, these are things that we can make changes. Now this, I don't know if I should hit you with. <laughs> that, that's for my 26, that's for Yolanda and my 26 year old son. I don't do them. Cho chocolate chip dough. Boom. <laughs> so, I, I okay, I will that. allow you because we gotta celebrate. We definitely have to celebrate. But again, look at this. You're just, you're, you're killing me. I mean, cheese on top of cheese. Let's have cheese with cheese. Let's have cheese with cheese with more cheese. So we're getting the point, and there's one other thing that I want to talk about, and it's, it's blaring at me here. Dairy. Dairy is an irritant. Again, it has a lot of fat in it. So if you're going to go with dairy, go with your skim milk or go with rice or almond or coconut milk. And then this has 210 calories in literally a half a cup. And that's my favorite. <laughs> that's so, my favorite. So this you need to wean off of yeah. because I am going to be your health conscience because <laughs> this is crazy. I mean, this is like, if you look at it, you're going to get big. So these are the things that I would take out of your refrigerator. Now let's go into your cupboard. Okay. Let's see what we find in these cupboards, Joe. You know, when, when we go in cupboards, it's usually just old habits. So, and it's things that are hidden. As I was mentioned, starchy carbohydrates. So you want to stay away from, say, just rice. And if something is white rice, then it has no nutritional value. So you're going to go on this quick high, you're going to crash, you're going to burn. Again, it's very, very dense. I'd rather you stay with vegetables. You know, and being Italian, I mean, I love pasta, but it doesn't love us where it's not necessarily unhealthy, but it's very dense. So your body can only utilize 300 calories or 75 grams of carbs within, say, a 90-minute period of time. So, Joe, you and I, if we wanted to just have, say, 300 calories, it would be a small bowl like this. You and I, we're big dudes and we want more. We'll be going back and back until we wear it. Where we can have, say, 300 calories of colorful vegetables, which are 75 grams of carbs, in something this big. It's going to be more fulfilling. The other thing is, is that I'm seeing it here and it's killing me is this mayo. And mayo will take you in the weeds. It will take you off course every time you make a sandwich. You think you could be having something like tuna or turkey or chicken. As soon as you put this on here, I mean, you might as well have, you know, like a cheeseburger because you're putting just invisible calories that you really don't know about. And then over here is just your infamous bread. And anything that's white, whether it's the white rice or white bread, no nutritional value. You're gonna go quickly on a high, you're gonna crash and you're gonna burn. And your insulin levels are gonna go up and they're gonna go down. And lastly, your spam over here <laughs> is just killing me. This is something that you need to make sure that you take out of the house. And I see alcohol over there. And all I will say about alcohol is that alcohol is very caloric. Whether it's wine or whether it's, it's whiskey, it's going to have more calories and these calories are going to catch up and you're going to end up having, you know, you're going to end up drinking your second dinner. So these are all important things to help you lose excess body fat that everyone needs to know. I'm going to say, I'm going to see you soon. I don't like goodbyes and I want you to put one foot in front of the other. I want you to truly believe. I want you to speak it. And most importantly, I want you to live it. But you're doing amazing. And I know how bad you want this. So take care of your wife and take care of yourself. And know, yes, that, and know that I love you.
Give me a hug. I did. All right. Okay. Yep. Be good. All right. Thank you, Peter. You got it. You got to go with your gut because I knew I was supposed to come and say hello, see how he's doing. And what you need to do is truly believe again and make sure that if you're having a tough day, that there's always another chance called tomorrow. If we are truly fortunate to have that, maximize it because life can be grand. And that's what I want for you. Welcome back. So you're finally ready to make that commitment. You've joined a health club and you want to have a personal trainer. I've been training thousands of people over the last 25 years. And I will tell you this, all trainers are not created equal. I've had seven different health clubs and hundreds of trainers. I want to show you a list of things you need to know. When picking a trainer, make sure that they have a certification with a national certification program, such as the National Gym Association or the ISSA. There's many more, but make sure it's current, as well as they should be CPR certified and certified with defibrillators. They should be asking you important questions before you ever work out with them. Are you on any medication? What are your fitness goals? What is your medical history? All these should be supplied by your trainer. And most importantly, you need to tell your trainer on how you want to look and feel, not your trainer telling you on how you should look. It's your body. Be the CEO of your own temple. Now that you know how to pick a personal trainer, how do you pick a health club that's best for you? I want to show you some simple tips before you sign on the dotted line. The first question you need to ask yourself is, do you really need to join a gym? A gym has a lot of benefits, but if you're just looking to enjoy walking, exercising outdoors, working out at home or at your office or apartment building that has a fitness center already, you may be wasting your money. When picking a health club, remember that every amenity that that club has, you're going to be paying for. So for instance, this beautiful pool, do you swim? Before you make that choice, know that the water is a great way to condition yourself. It's the most symmetrical exercise on the planet. You're actually burning twice as many calories walking in the water than you do on land. And if you're recovering from an injury or you're morbidly obese, if you're just walking in waist high water, you're taking 50% of that weight right off of the joint. You may have had hip replacement. It's an awesome way to recover. Chest high water, 90% of the weight is coming right off of the joint. So as you're about to sign on that dotted line, make sure you think long and hard, am I gonna use this pool? Maybe basketball is your thing. Many people like to work out together, so maybe group fitness classes are right for you. We live in an age now that you could find everything on social media. Before joining any health club, check them out on their social media page and see what other people are saying about them. Check the posts of current members to see if they're happy and if they like what's going on. Also check Google searches. Then you can really get a good sense on a day-to-day -day before you join that club. The next thing to consider, and probably one of the most important, is location. So many people skip their workout because the location of the club is not convenient. Pick a health club that fits into your lifestyle. If you want to work out in the morning or evenings, a health club near your home is probably best for you. But if you want to exercise during your lunch break or after work, it needs to be close to your work. Whichever you choose, make sure your health club is within five to eight miles in square radius. Anything further, you're probably not going to make it. If you think you found the perfect club, make sure you ask for a guest pass. Don't be afraid to ask for a deal. Ask about discounted rates. If you want to take an exercise class, 
be sure to ask if those are included in your membership. And most importantly, if these classes are crowded, when you want to go. Welcome back. You know, I've owned health clubs for decades and I want to go over the do's and don'ts when it comes to strength training. Some of the questions that you ask yourself, how much weight should you be lifting and should you use the buddy system? Well, the first thing that you need to remember is safety. So when you're doing a bench press or anything, you need to make sure you put collars on so that this is not going to act as the guillotine and hurt you. And then when you get down there, you need to determine, do I want to tone and lose weight or do I want to build muscle? Well, let's talk about building muscle. The magic number is 10 repetitions. And make sure that when you're measuring yourself, you're a little over shoulder, you have little lines here that are meters that gauge you for this. But this is all working your upper chest and it's a great workout. It's a nice fluid range of motion. You don't want to cheat and put your back up because you're going to really hurt your lower back. Never sacrifice style for the amount of weight. I got two more reps. I'm going for the gold. Last rep and I'm coming up. Now, how do you know that the weight is best for you? The last three repetitions, the eighth, ninth, and tenth, should be challenging. If you could do a lot more, like say 15, then you need to up the antes and up the weight. If you can't and you can only do say eight or nine and you don't have a training partner, which is really essential, then you need to lower the weight. But if you're in the right zone, those last three reps should be challenging for you. Now that we know how to build muscle and to do 10 repetitions, if you're looking to lose excess body fat and to really tone, you want to go lighter in weight and higher in repetitions. For example, I'm on a leg press. I usually do 600 pounds. This is only 130 pounds and I can do about 30 or 40 or 50 reps with this. When you're dealing with your lower extremities, your legs, you want to do 15 to 20 repetitions, then rest 60 seconds, then do the next set. So again, just to, just to do a summary here, if you're looking to tone, lose excess body fat, and really sculpt your body, you want to go higher repetitions, 15 to 20 repetitions and lighter weight. Now that you know the importance of safety, of weight, of repetitions for your goal, the last thing that I want to talk about, which is crucial, is having a training partner. See, I've competed for over 25 years. I've won 50 world championship bodybuilding titles. I always had a training partner for two reasons. One was safety. I wanted to make sure that I could push the envelope and do the weights that I can. I even got out of my comfort zone, not knowing if I could do the weight, but had the trust of another human being to be there in case I needed him. The second is motivation. There were mornings at five o'clock in the morning, I didn't want to get out of bed, but I knew that I had to meet my training partner 20 miles away, and it was snowing outside. I would have been in trouble. Once I got there, a good training partner breeds competition, and competition breeds success. I don't think I would have been a champion if I didn't have help, and help started with a great training partner. Try to get yourself an accountability buddy. Make an appointment with yourself. Document it, journal it. Even if you have to text your training partner, give them a wake up call, lean on each other, and it will help you reach your fitness goals.
Welcome back. I hope this show has motivated and educated each and every one of you. What we do on this show is serious business. It's dealing with our health, how food could work for us, not against us, and how exercise is amazing medicine. But when you really think about it, in my world, laughter is medicine for the soul. And we need to laugh sometimes so hard that it creates endorphins. And it's a good thing. In 2017, we gave you some really good medicine that you haven't seen. I wanna share it with you right now. I always make sure that I have a pre-workout drink and it really helps me. For years I've been doing this. A lot of professional athletes do and it... <laughs> I'm at a fitness store, blah, 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 blah. To help your whole body recover better, is to climb three two should i say good morning <laughs> not only is it a great stress reliever but it also is gonna um, blah 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 i forgot what i was gonna say let's pick up something that truly is going to be the wrong product <laughs> and the <G's. laughs> you may want to add the spice turmeric <laughs> you know what's the crazy thing is that. <laughs> Here we 